Welcome back, everyone, to Scavenging with Piney, a series of tales, travels, and trifles. And today, we are going to be going on a pub crawl. And the start of this is going to be here in the Lothcobel Tavern, where there are going to be some people, despite the fact that this town is not exactly in its best shape. Strange place for a pub crawl, but let's go inside. And here we are inside the Lothcobel Tavern. We have plenty of memories of this place because this is where we first met the Jacks over here. And we had a few adventures here. And in fact, this was the first major zone where we had this series or my other series involving this character, and that is Piney and Gondor. Yes, we did start on the other side of the mountains and go through the path of the dead and all that stuff. But of course, that was just starter stuff in order to get us on this side of Gondor. And Western Gondor is the first major area, and that's where I started out that series. And in celebration of that, that is why in this Gondorian pub crawl, I'm wearing my Gondorian armor, which I believe I got while questing in Western Gondor. Now that we've taken care of our little time here, which involved a few drinks with the Jacks and all that stuff, let's now head into Dolamroth. In Dolamroth, we are heading for the Scholar's Tavern which I believe is over here. Yep, here we are. Time to relax and have a drink. Now, I don't remember all that much at this particular tavern. Of course, there are plenty of stuff in Dol Amroth since this was the main town for the For Western Gondor, where we had all sorts of fun stuff, meeting the daughter of Prince Imrahil, and trying to get all around the area to find out about the Swan Knights and what was the best way to deploy them, and eventually fighting off the Nazgul and all that stuff. And you always remember fighting off the Nazgul. There aren't too many cases where you get to do that. So, let's head into the next area, and that's where we head into Central Gondor, into Ethring. Here is the Ethring Tavern, which I remember well because it also involved quests involving Jajax. We meet into him with him on a few occasions. And apparently... Yes, having a little drink with him, right, there's the mug, is pretty common when you're dealing with Jajax. And I'm surprised that they decided to put the mug for the Remembrance drink here on the bar rather than next to Jajax, since most of our drinking here was with him. And there was a case where we had to clear his name from a murder that happens within the town. Now that that's complete, it's time to head into Eastern Gondor, where we are going to head into Forlong's Hall. Forlong's Hall is in Arnach, and I believe his hall is over here. This looks like a nice grand place for a lord, and he must have quite a number of drinks if they're going to treat that as part of the tra tavern crawl. That's what I got to say about that, actually. This looks like the entrance to the upper part of the city, but this is the hall itself, right up here. So let's go inside. And here is Forlong's Hall, and this is the toughest place in order to find the various items to consume. Always wind up getting lost whenever I come to this place. You have to find every nook and cranny in this place in order to find the proper locations. As for memories here, I really don't remember all that much in this hall. 
Looks like mainly a, yeah, a place for trainers and all that stuff. So all sorts of things go in there. It serves as a tavern. It serves as a fighting place and a general meeting place, I guess, for sent for Eastern Gondor. And of course, I just never really came to. In fact, I don't think. I even really knew where this place was until I had to come here for the crawl and right okay well you sell stuff but the drink isn't here that was the tavern key ah here's a met remembrance yeah way down tucked in this corner yeah, you said. Actually, that was the vault keeper, wasn't it? <laughs> See, that shows you how much I come in here. Get to the barkeep from a vault keeper. All right, here we go. I think I've had a few too many of these already. But I'm only about halfway through this. Well, even not quite that. And now it's time to head into uh, Minas Tirith. And that means it is time for me to change my graphics because I think at this level, if I went into Minas Tirith, I'd have a real fun crash. So I'll meet you in Minas Tirith with graphics turned down. The first of the five taverns in Minas Tirith where we're visiting is the Wheel and Task, which is on the first tier of Minas Tirith, pretty far down on the northern side of the first tier, so therefore you have to do quite a bit of traveling from the main gate in order to get here. So it's not an area where you really wind up all that much, so as you can imagine there aren't really all that many memories to this place. But I should note that there are a lot more than five taverns within Minas Tirith, but I presume they wanted to catch some of the other places in Gondor, so they decided to have only five that were here. So let's head into the next one, which hmm, I think that'll be the Mumak and Keep. As for the Mumak and Keep, we very definitely have some memories of that, as we have with Durin here and Durifin and dearer than all here, though we've already done the latter parts of it. I'm surprised that they're still there, considering that uh, they did not do too well in the Battle of Pelennor Fields, at least not the two younger ones. That's one thing I remember here. Alright, let's have my obligatory drink. They used to take a long time. All right, there you go. And there should be a, another one. Now, of course, we had part of the epic storyline here where after having that little instance where they ran into a Mumak, they decided to make that makeshift one over there. Well, actually, there probably was some version of it already existing considering the name of the tavern, but they decided to have this prepped up so they could do some target practice to get practice shooting at its eyes. So therefore, that's the Mumak and Keep. So now let's head to the Haven. The Haven is one of two pubs that are on the third tier. And this one is just about right next to the ramp that goes to the fourth tier. So it, you would think it would be easy to find if it's so close to that ramp, but this is the one that gives me the most trouble to find because the marker for it is nearly invisible on my map because there are just so many things here because it's right next to a crafting area. So therefore, yeah, I tend to lose it. But we are out of here. 
And let's go to the other one, which is one where you do quest quite a bit, and that's in the Merry Swan. The swan just outside the door makes this place a lot easier to find. And this is also one that has a few more memories because this is where we meet Forlong and all his friends. Yes, when Forlong is not home, drinking at his own private little tavern, then he uses the Merry Swan as a nice place to meet and remember old times with his friends. And they sent you on a number of quests that you wouldn't be surprised sometimes involves drinking. I know, what a huge shock with those guys. Apparently there are a lot of memories here. I don't remember too many memories that involve getting up onto the stage. But it's possible that I had forgotten that little detail. But there is oh, one more, and that's on the tier 5, and that would be the Thirsty Seer. The Thirsty Seer is one I remember more from the outside than the inside. And that is because this is where we got the basket that we got for the picnic with Pippin. Now, that took care of the remembrance, but where is the... Where did they hide the beverage itself? Ah, an ale, an ale. Bottoms up. And this is our, all right, where did I forget to take a sip? Well, I will figure out where I forgot to take a sip and then figure out where to go next. Of course, it was the Mary Swan where I had those three remembrances. So apparently, I was so busy remembering that I forgot. And that takes care of the pub crawl. But now I think it's time for us to take care of a little bit of a puzzle that we had. And that has to do with these little slips of paper that we have in our inventory. Those are last of our travels, so we got a couple of dies there. And that are these things. Now, fortunately for us, when I told the game to reorder everything, it put these in what I believe is the original order we received them. And that the last one here has this thing, 971624835. And what we have here then is a single character on each of these. That's a little period there a little comma there. So therefore, another period here, a five. Yeah, th they're hard to read on the screen. But the idea there is that I uh, use this key to reorder these. So a nine goes there, seven goes there, one, two, you already know that's the period. One, two, three, four, so that would be six, two, that'll be the comma. That would be four, eight, three, five. And these would give us the coordinates 23.8, comma, 57.5. So therefore, after I sober up, I'll meet you with better graphics over that location. I'll see you there. We are approaching 238575 and I even see a quest ring, which means that we might be at the right place. And Huh? It looks like we found a standing stone. Well, 
Well, the standing stone is what it is, so let's see what it has to say. You see some text scrawled upon the stone, it reads, Be close. The ritual to unlock my bounty is as follows. John Marla Shelton, Sergeant at Arms, Irminrich, Draghi Stadt Club, and Gapi. And the first question you have is, What? <laughs> so it says ritual, obviously, or probably, it's a series of emotes. But the question is, which emotes? Now the best clue I've had on this is that for the last week I have been going through the series the Professor Olson has been holding on Mythgard Academy for his in-depth immersive Lord of the Rings go through and he has these field trips after them and one time he went to the elf camp in over in the North Downs and in the North Downs at that elf camp he noted that there was a guy named John there that was cowering. So therefore I am taking this as a hint on that matter. So therefore John, Marla Shelton, Sergeant er, Enric, Braggy Stockler and Gappy are people doing certain emotes and we must do those five emotes. So let's see if I can find these people and find out what they're up to. Here we are at Lane Gilead in the North Downs. And here is John here. And yeah, he's cowering. So thank you, Professor Olson, for the tip when that is. As for the others, let's face it. This is one of those cases where they definitely were expecting us to find them on the, internet, on the internet because who would know from the top of their head where these other four people were? I, actually all five of them unless you happen to have Professor Olson visit all five by coincidence. And Olson's little trip by the way was back in February or March before this whole scavenger hunt began, so he certainly did not have that in mind when he pointed it out. So, let's head for the next one. Marla Shelton is over here in Trestle Bridge, and she seems to be in mourning for some. She has that posture you take when you use the slash mourn command. Her friend here is obviously crying. This is after a battle and all that stuff, so yes, you can imagine she is not in the top form, so therefore she is in mourning. Now the next two are over in Bree. Bragi Stadt Club is the legendary guardian trader, so it's possible that the guardians will be able to recognize the name at least. And as you can see, he seems to be telling a story of some sort. That takes care of that. And I'm told that the Sergeant at Arms is way down at the South Gate. Verbena Greenhand is not on the list there, but she is a vendor for the anniversary, so I got a kite from her. I figure might as well have a little something to run with as I go over to the south gate. So let's continue. Oh, I may have to pull it in a little bit. And here is Sergeant at Arms Erminric who looks fairly alert and he is looking around. So therefore that would be look around and that just leaves Copy, who is where else in Moria? Boy, they're being cruel with us, aren't they? Gappy is in the main base over in the Flaming Deeps and he is taking a nice sit down so therefore I'll have to assume the emote intended here is sit. So that answers our five questions on what each of the characters are doing so we can head back to the Standing Stone 
and see as how it works. I really must congratulate all those people who managed to figure all of that out before there was much information on it on the internet. If you had the time and patience to go through that entire puzzle, congratulations. As for this, we are back here at the Standing Stone. And here's the order we're to do it in. John Cowering, Marla Shelton Morning, Sergeant at Arms, Erminric, who's looking around, Braggy Stout Club, who's telling a story, and Gappy, who is sitting. So I've got those five emotes up here all ready to go as soon as I accept the quest. So let's gower. Let's be depressed. Uh, yes, looking around. Telling a story. Sitting. And finishing the quest. And that completes the standing stone. So therefore, when we return next time... Actually, let's go and see what it looks like. I must say that my yard is really getting cluttered. So it's a good thing I have one of these premium houses to hold all of this stuff. But here is our standing stone. Including the three little modules along each side of it. And that concludes our travels for this week. When we return next time, we will be finishing off the scavenger hunt. At least the initial version of it with our trifles in the next episode of Scavenging with Pineleaf, a series of tales, travels, and trifles.